Good afternoon. My name is Tatiana Bilbao, and I'm a principal of Tatiana Bilbao Studio, in Mex a firm based, an architecture firm based in Mexico City. I first would like to very much thank Beatriz for inviting us here, um, and all of you for being uh, here and able to share this with me. I would like to start by acknowledging that I would not be here if it was not for the hundreds, but as said, the thousands of beings that have participated in the creation of this. Upon the impossibility of naming them all, uh, I still would like to mention some of them. I think Ernesto Coppel, Kelly, the man behind, the one that has put it all up to his soul in making this project, after his true love for the land is one of the, for sure, one to mention. His son-in-law, Jose Luis Moyogoyon, who has instrumented this, along with Sandro Landucci, have been key figures. But definitely, without my five wonderful partners, with, of whom, without of who, with whom, of course, I wouldn't even be standing here, Alba Cortez, Soledad Rodriguez, Juan Pablo Enyure, Mariano Castillo, and Katia Bilbao, who happens to be my, also my sisters. I would also still like to thank the penguins who will not be brought here unless they decide to come by themselves one day. Mazatlan is a, a city on the northwest part of the country. It's exactly kind of the city where um, in inland, Mexico in inland, the Sea of Cortez, which is a sea between the Baja Peninsula and the land, um, starts to, to formate. It's one of the most wonderful natural aquariums of the world. And it is really the place of a, one of the a, most diverse ecosystems in the whole planet. In 2016, there were plans to consolidate the central park of this city. The central park um, has a natural regulating lagoon, which is essential to, to, to its hydraulic system in full. The plans to consolidate, it were, uh, to consolidate the park were to understand how to create a use that would be able to not only function its vital uh, way for the hydraulic system, but also to create really an environment that was able to be used and, uh, and be a platform for thriving for both the ecosystem in the city, but also the city itself, the society that lives and inhabits there. These plans were very ambitious, and it encompassed really cleaning the land and the possibility of regenerating uh, the whole uh, um, system and, and uh, medium that the, the, the lagoon holded. The plan started to emerge, and there were two very ambitious uh, pieces of infrastructure coming along with the plan, a museum and an aquarium, both very ambitious to their times and almost impossible to, to realize them. One of them really was even trying to hold penguins. The region obviously couldn't acquire yet them, and plans for those two, of course, well held. Nevertheless, in 2019, a, start, a building started to get built. We don't know it's, it, if it finally we used or who it was used. The, the intention, as I said, in the, in the plans in 2017, 16 was to build an, an aquarium. We know the story afterwards. In 2100, the water rose to a point where the building was lost. We don't know what was used for. We don't know the, the, the use of the 100 years. There was never nothing found there. In 2227, there was a record marked inside. The water receded. We know that. And life was thriving. In 2,289, we were asked to find a way to understand how to enter this building and discover what was happening there. Maybe us humans, maybe us other species. The building standard and the species, the life was full. The building really was holding a lot of things there. We wanted to understand how we could be able to enter it and to understand and to navigate and to relate to this life that was thriving in many, many ways inside. 
we created a way to explore uh, the building uh, with two very big stairs that would take you to the, to the top of the building where the, uh, uh, they, uh, a very big piece of uh, flora really extended there. After arriving to the, to the top of the building and able to discover what was happening in, on top of the building, we created a, a hole in the center in order to land and arrive what was happening uh, and, and start to entering what is um, the building done of. This building um, today is 2023. We have records of, of some photographs of 2020 when the building started to uh, get really out there. And this was kind of how it was looking, right? We opened paths in the year 2289 to really be able to relate into this possibility of a space in a completely different way. We thought of not touching anything, but then we thought enabling the possibility of relating to this ecosystem could enable other possibilities and other types of relationships. Today, in 2023, the building is almost ready to be discovered and be used by the humans they, that the planet has to inhabit. The responsibility of the use of these humans at this moment uh, and presently is the, the possibility of the future for this building. This building, as I said, is approached from the, from the exterior, from this very vast, uh, large central park on Mazatlan, uh, by these two very big stairs that uh, allow you to arrive to the roof. From the roof, you start to navigate uh, towards the center where you enter and uh, submerge yourself in this central patio, and then you start to navigating through its, through its thick walls, through its opening roofs, to its extended uh, life that emerges in there, where connections and disconnections with us and other beings are being made. You enter this building in, um, in, 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 a, in a moment where the planet um, is expelling us. I really don't believe that we are, the planet is running out of time. Who is running out of time in the planet is only us. The planet holds an ecosystem that we are part of it, but it's not liking us. The planet already has expelled, at least as we know, one, ser one very big um, species that inhabited the, the dinosaurs. They were expelled before us. We might have the same future. In the time, in the meantime, the planet is going to, to really uh, expel other species as well in order to really, at the end, kick us out. Who and how it will remain probably is the responsibility of the people who inhabit this building in 2023. We really hope that this building opens the possibilities to relate to our own ecosystem in very different ways. I have always thought that uh, aquariums alienate ourselves from from the life that really be, we really belong, even though their, their objective is very, very different. Their objective is supposedly to be that of the, the, the building that allows us to relate to that one specific ecosystem. But it, it fantasizes it in such a way that it never really uh, gets to, to allow us that possibility. Actually, I think it allows us to think that it's a world that we don't belong so, so we can do whatever we need. This building, and uh, hopefully, it creates a potentiality to mediate between a world that is seen by humans as something that could be dominated, as something that could be determined, as someone that has time, to an ecosystem that doesn't understand uh, its life upon those terms in any regard. This building, hopefully, is a platform for a, for a new architecture that really starts to understand that we need to regain our place in this ecosystem in order to remain. Or maybe not. Maybe we don't want to.
hopefully this building will clarify uh, all those doubts that I still, at least, I do have. The architecture uh, of the building presents itself as a robust structure that was abandoned. It remained. It remained. It, it, uh, the system um, of the structure that was in place in 2100 and for, until the day we arrived back uh, was not as harsh to this building as to other structures. And the building was able to remain because it was not built for any specific intention, we thought. Or maybe it, because it was a program it holded was something that really allowed us to think of the time and the time we have remain, remaining in, in, in this planet. I really like to, to think on this building and the moment in present, now back again, in 2023, the same way as Diego Rivera depicted in his mural, The Man Controller of the Universe. This mural showed us how a, a world controlled by science was confronted by socialism, capitalism. But today, we might be reminded of this mural at the, at the moment of seeing it, because a man controller of the universe is almost a, a, a utopia as this building was, uh, is, and the story that it was built upon it. The man does not control the universe and cannot control the universe. The universe exists and it has no time no time as we know it, and the, the, the meaning of time is really something that is only related to our existence in it, but has nothing to do with the planet, with the universe, on what anything we think uh, we can even think to measure it with those terms. We have built this building in 2023, and hopefully in 2289, uh, we still exist to see if it has uh, really uh, been able to uh, hold on to its purposes or at least to see what uh, the imprints on their walls um, uh, revealed to us of the time of the planet had lived to lived in 2023. Thank you very much.